about today, and that's mainly about who poor Tepe is, and maybe more importantly to all of you, our commitment to rice. I want to start by just um, recognizing um, all of my colleagues are in the audience. I know the lighting might be a little far, but I'll ask them to please stand up. Many of them I think you might have seen um, throughout the day in their blue shirts or scarves. Or, they're looking so good. We have such a strong presence here, so I just want to say thank them for the support and thank you for all of them for being here. I also want to encourage you to come by our booth. We have ice rice, ice cream rice. Is that how you say it? Is that right? Um, that I have not tried yet. I'll paint it as soon as I'm done here. But I hear that it's delicious. So please come by during the day and um, over the next couple of days and, and try um, some of the ice cream, uh, but also talk to us about Proteva. Um, I'm going to start as I think the film kind of showed you a little bit about who we are and what we stand for, um, our commitment to rice, our commitment to this region, and why we're here in such full force um, for this conference to make sure that folks start to, to understand who we are. We have a slide that talks about our purpose. Maybe the guys in the back will, will put that up, which will help um, just think a little bit about Portaba. But I want to first to start with the name. A lot of folks ask, where did you get the name? What does it stand for? It has nothing to do with your parent companies up down DuPont. Well, that is kind of true, frankly. But it is a name that we, it, we spent a lot of time thinking about. Who we wanted to be, how we wanted to be recognized, and how we wanted to capture who we are as a new company. So just a little bit of history and a reminder, as the video explained, we have been formed from the merger of two U.S. companies, DuPont and Dow, who combined have about 300 years of history doing business around the world. And we're right now, we are the agriculture division of this merger of Dow DuPont. But next June, June of 19, early in the month, we will become our own company. A freestanding, publicly traded, agriculture pure company. Working around the globe and certainly in Asia Pacific and agriculture. But before we do that, there's a lot to accomplish. There's a lot to, to grow. There's a lot of things that we have to become. And one is what we're going to be called. That was one major decision. We started, as you might imagine, with a whole host of names. 500, actually. We had to go through a process to say, what can be translated in all these different languages? What's going to have meaning in multiple languages around the world? And our boss, Jim Collins, was adamant. We had to have a name that meant something. Not just letters thrown together that looked good, sounded OK. Had to have something behind it, something that was relatable to our employees, very importantly, to our customers, and to our partners. So as we looked at all these options, and we kept wiggling down the list, making changes, trying to decide what is going to be, what's going to capture this heartfelt commitment to agriculture that every single one of our employees feel, and that commitment to our partners, those growers, the NGOs that we work with, the researchers, the scientists, all the others. What is that going to be? And Corteva was a name that kept coming up. And you might have seen some of our posters, and you might have seen the heart. This core is heart. The center, heart. And we all can relate to what things that are important to us, the heart of who we are. And Teva, and I want to make sure you all know, sometimes when I speak, I ask people to pronounce it and back to me, but I won't do that to you today because you're a very sophisticated audience, so you probably already know. But it's Teva, nature. So when you put them together, heart of nature, some say earth, that is the meaning, that is the oomph of who we are as a company. Core of nature, heart of nature, or Teva. So when you go around practicing, I had an experience in the elevator just last night. I'm 
call it the 18th floor. So about, about 12 floor stories to write up with a gentleman who asked me, I had all my branded gear. You might have seen this right in our blue shirts and I had a scarf and a notebook and a bag and all the things with Corteva. <laughs> and a nice gentleman said, what is Corteva? So I had my little elevator speech prepared. Supposed to do, be able to do it just a snap. And so when he's done and everybody's looking at both of us as I'm giving this spiel, he said, so you're a technology company, you're a science company, you're an agriculture company. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And he's getting off and he said, you're going to take care of my parents who live on a station in Australia and farm. I'm like, yes. That's, that's who we are, science, technology for agriculture, working with farmers. The information that's up, as you can see, our purpose, things that um, really come together, those words that help you define who you are, what you stand for, what you believe in. So when folks see a name, they see the name Corteva, they know there's more to it, there's something behind it. And I'm gonna break it down a little bit because I think it's very key to knowing who we are and start with enrich, the lives of those who produce. Enrich, make better, improve, give meaning to, all the things enrich means. And for us in Bryce, that could be making sure that farmers have hybrid seeds or direct seeding techniques, helping to educate farmers so they can be more profitable so they can reduce the food that we are going to need. You all know the numbers better than I do. You all work and live in this industry every single day. You know the demands that farmers have to produce more rice. You hear about it, you think about it. Farmers know it from their own families. They also know what the world demand is for food. 70% increase by 2050. Those numbers are staggering. We cannot, will not meet those demands. Farmers will not be able to, we as a society will not be able to without more technology, better science, new tools to meet a very, very demanding and changing, challenging environment to produce food. My own family farms, we don't grow rice, I'm in the southern part of the United States, not quite in the rice growing region, but we grow peanuts. And I am reminded constantly about the challenges and how tough it is for farmers to make a living and continue to grow that food. As one farmer told me just recently, as we look at huge disasters in my part of the world, that it's hard to know what kind of impact you're gonna have when your business partner is Mother Nature. Those challenges that farmers continue to have with severe weather patterns, you see them in every place around the globe and you certainly feel them here in Asia Pacific. So enriching farmers, giving them those tools that makes and have this, um, the ability to deal with these changing weather extreme patterns. That is what Corteva is about, is making sure we're working with farmers so they have their tools. We're listening to farmers. We don't just make decisions in boardrooms and state rooms around the globe. We make them on the farm. We go out, we listen. We hear what their challenges are. We talk to them. We understand the partnership that is needed with all of you as well to make sure we get this right. So we're enriching those lives for those who produce. And, although, and also for those who consume. Now, I'll be honest with you, that was a stretch for our company. They actually talk about consumers and our purpose. We don't have that direct interaction with consumers. We are an input company. We're a tech company. We're a science company. We're not selling something directly to consumers. So why should we put the word consume in our purpose? It's a good question, and it's one I'll be honest with you. We debated, we debated internally about who we're going to be. Enriching the lives of producers made a lot of sense. Everybody could buy into that. 
And when you start talking about those Zoom, it was a harder sell. It reminds me of a story of my own father. I had a chance to ask him just a couple of years ago about his choices to be a farmer. Actually, his choices were taken away from him. He grew up on a farm and so did my mother, but he wanted to be an engineer. He wanted to build bridges and roads and leave the farm. He was in college and my maternal grandfather died. And so it was expected that he would come back to the farm to farm. That's just what happens in, in farm families. My mother's only brother was still in high school. It was either he left school or my father left college. Somebody had to come back who could carry on that tradition that is so rich in agriculture. I asked him, after many, many years, did he regret that? Did he resent having to make that sacrifice? And he looked at me kind of weird, but he had thought about it in a long time. Maybe never. It was just something that he, he did, because it was the right thing to do. And finally his answer was, no, I don't have any regrets. I'm sorry your grandfather died because you and your sister would have enjoyed knowing him. He was a great man. But I have absolutely no regret because I'm part of the most honorable profession there is. We grow food. We feed people. That's why it's so important for us as a company, us as an industry, not to forget that those who produce are very connected to those who consume. It's something we are learning at Cordova, that as we talk about farming practices, and new seed choices, new crop protection part, um, products that are better for the environment, and reach higher standards, all, the, all those tied up together are really about making sure that we're enriching the lives, not only of those who produce, but those who consume. And if any of you are dealing with consumers, if you're talking to consumers like I am, and you're listening, as I always say with a capital L, you know that their demands are even greater than, than ever. They want to know where their food comes from. They want to know about a company like mine and our competitors and other in the value chain. They want to know what we're doing is producing, helping to produce safer food, more nutritious food, more flavorful food, longer shelf lives, less food waste. All these elements is what consumers are asking whether you're a small shareholder farmer or a large family-owned business. They're asking and demanding this from agriculture. We want to be that partner. That is something Corteva is completely com committed to, is making sure we are the partner that can help farmers answer those questions, those demands, frankly. And ensuring progress is the next part of our purpose. Progress, looking ahead, what's to come, I mentioned where we have to be with rice, just rice of all the different food items, just rice has to increase by 70% by 2050. If we're going to be able to feed a hungry world and for generations to come. That is the other area that we want to focus on is who's farming, who's consuming. We feel that we have a responsibility as a company to make sure that we are not just thinking about today, that we continue to invest in a pipeline, continue to invest in products that do meet higher standards, do give those tools to farmers to make sure that they can meet the demands from consumers. And how do we make sure there's profitability so the next generation will actually come back to the farm? You probably have heard many times what the average age of the U.S., the world farmer, U.S. and the rest of the world farmers are. Anybody have a guess? Close to 60. Somebody said it right away. Close to 60 years old. So what does that mean? 
that there are more people older than 60 who are farming and not very many young people coming in. People are looking, young people are looking for opportunities away from agriculture, off the farm. So we believe at Corteva, the ways that we're gonna help change that dynamic, help encourage young people to stay on the farm or for some of them actually to come back to the farm is to show that you can make a living. You can be happy. You can raise your family on a farm and in work in agriculture. So when you look at the totality of our purpose, and I've kind of broken it down for you, to give some thought, because every single word in that purpose really defines who we are as a Corteva. It helps us as a company. It helps us as employees, think about what binds us together, what makes us different. In my mind, what makes us better, and I know I have competitors in the room, so I'll be careful. But those are the words that guide us to enrich the lives of those who produce and those who consume and during progress for generations to come. I hope that gives you a feel for the passion and the commitment behind who we are. The other list is, I hope, is it, uh, yeah, it's up there behind me, I couldn't tell where it was, of our brand values. Very simple phrases that I think define every single person in our company. We've talked a lot about enriching lives, about standing tall is another that I love. My mother always said to me, hold your shoulders back and stand, stand up straight. I resented that as a young girl, and now I know exactly what she meant. We're leaders, and we want to act boldly. We want to be curious. Ask questions. Know that the norm is not always the way it has to be. That we can look for new farming practices. We can help our farmers find ways to be more productive, to be more successful. Very simple techniques in some cases, and sometimes very complicated with innovation and technology. But we know that's the way when farmers ask questions and I have a problem, say, how can I fix this? How can I do that better? That's who we are at Corteva, is helping to find those answers. We also want to build together. This one thing I hope you'll hear from every Corteva employee, no matter where they're located in this great region, is that we want partners. We need partners. We're only one element. We recognize that in this food value chain. And we need to be working together, cooperating. And maybe with partners we haven't partnered with before. Maybe it is new gen NGOs. Maybe it is environmentalists. Maybe it is a consumer organization. Maybe it is someone different, a new research idea, new technology. That's how we're going to solve all these problems, is by being open, by encouraging others to the table, by bringing new ideas. That's what's going to make Corteva successful. That's what's going to make this industry successful. As we look at the challenges for rice and producing rice, as we look at weather, the only way we're going to find these answers is if we are cooperating, we're coordinating, we're communicating, we're sharing. We're going to be bold and be different in that way. And obviously being upstanding. I think our ethic and who we are, how we interact with others is so critical. We want to be that trusted partner. We want to be that respected partner. And how do you get to be a trusted partner? You earn it. You earn it. Nobody gives you that. And at Corteva, we know that. We know our industry might have made some mistakes in the past in certain areas, and we own that. We understand that. But we also pledge to do better, to do different, to be more open, to be more transparent, to talk about what we're doing, to be able to share that so others know and understand. It's a hard, high bar to live up to, I'll be honest with you. And there are times when it's easier to revert back to the way we've always done it. 
But I stand here today on behalf of our company to say we want to do more. We want to do better. We want to be upstanding and we will always do what's right. And then last is live safely. And I think that goes to all of us who work in agriculture. We know how dangerous it can be. We know how harmful it can be. We want to make sure our products are good for our um, customers. We want to make sure our employees are safe, no matter if they're in a manufacturing plant, they're in a boardroom, in an office building, and certainly in the field. That's who we want to be as a company. So I hope you know a little bit more now about Corteva. You have a feel for who we are and who we want to be. And it's not just folks in nice crisp blue shirts and pretty blue scarves. It's a company with a heart. It's a company with meaning. It's a company who has very strong values, who recognizes the importance of our customers, who values the concerns and demands and interest of those who consume. We want to be a partner. We want to cooperate. We want to find solutions. When I think about what the difference a hybrid seed can make for rice growers, we have wonderful history, rich history, in hybrid seed for corn or maize, as many of you may know from our Pioneer brand. We know the difference it can make for productivity. Those kinds of ideas, crop protection products, that are easy to use, very effective, safe, good for the environment. Those are the kinds of things that we are going to continue to invest in. And we're going to be your partner, whether you're a research, whether you're a government leader, a decision maker, consumer leaning organization. We want to have that conversation with you. We want to see how we can work together to, to solve these many problems, many challenges. So now I'm going to shift just a little bit, as you know, a little bit more about Corteva to a topic that um, you might have heard in my bio about working with women in agriculture. It's something that's not only important to me as a person or a person who grew up in agriculture and still been involved in agriculture, but it's just as important to our company. Talking and highlighting and valuing the role of women in agriculture is not just something we do because it feels good. It's not just something that we like to do because, you know, it, it's a, an area that we, um, we want to be involved in. We do it because women are customers. Whether they're doing the back-breaking work in a rice field or the mind-bending work in an office doing marketing or selling a product or buying crop insurance, no matter what, the, the contributions of women in agriculture maybe not have been as recognized or acknowledged or valued as we feel they should. I think I learned yesterday, Farah, that one in three farmers in ASEAN are women. Often overlooked, often not appreciated. And I bet many of you don't really even know that today is the international, the UN's International Day of Rural Women. Did anybody know that besides if you don't work for the company? I can't see your hands. I'm going to assume there are maybe one or two in the room. Today is a day that the UN said, let's recognize those women who are working in small towns and villages on farms and ranches whether they're a small shareholder or a larger operation, we're honoring their contributions, the difference that they make in all of our lives, certainly all of us who enjoy food. And my guess is that's every single one of us. Maybe we enjoy more than we should. I certainly do. But today we're honoring them. Corteva, in, in the spirit of recognizing these great women, we've done a series of videos we traveled the world and talked to women on their operations, asked them to tell their story about their work in agriculture. Beautiful stories from across the globe, multiple commodities, different kinds of work. They look different, they sound different, but that love, that compassion, that commitment to feeding their family 
and ours. It shines through in their stories. So I could tell you about each one of them, but instead we're going to show a very short video of one woman in India, a rice grower, and if you're not touched by her story, I'm not sure you have a heart, because it's beautiful. So just for a few minutes, we're going to take a break and ask them to run the video, please. I think it's a lovely story and just an example of the hard work that so many women and men, frankly, do to make sure that we have um, the food that we all need um, to, to exist. It's very touching. I've seen this many times, and every time I think about being married at 13, it just makes me shake almost. Um, and then seeing her commitment and her hard work and how lovely um, she is. So I encourage you to go to our website, um, look at the other nine stories. Um, I think you will all um, see the commitment, the dedication of these hardworking people um, across the globe. So um, in closing, I just want to say thank you. Um, thank you for letting us be here. It's certainly an honor and a privilege to participate in this conference. Um, leave you with a lasting thought um, that Corteva will be our own company in June, but we are extremely committed to this region, um, and we are committed to rice, and we are very excited about seeing growth um, in both areas. So thank you very much, and enjoy the conference.